Warning, listening to Mac to Illy can make you think. Question reality and take responsibility for your own life. Listener discretion is advised. How's it going, Internet? This is Mac to Illy coming to you live from FEMA Region 5, or so I'm told, deep in the heart of middle of nowhere Ohio, or so I'm told, from the bowels of the most censored corner of the Internet, the Mac to Illy channel. And I've sat on this for a couple days. Usually somebody with a correct prediction after waiting some time for it to come true would, would gloat immediately. And I decided to sit on this correct prediction of the Milwaukee Bucks for a couple days. It's so satisfying to watch all these pundits that <laughs> admittedly make a lot more money than me. They're paid nicely to wear a nice three-piece suit on television and be wrong all the time and lie and mislead people and push strange agendas for Disney. A bunch of people who, if you've seen them pick up a basketball or football and throw it or shoot it, you'd be like, oh, goodness. This is supposed to be somebody that's an authority on sports? (laughs) Let's see you kick a ball. No, can't do that either. Let's see how you catch. Ah, yikes. So maybe everybody relax a little bit on letting Disney affiliates tell you who's good at sports and who isn't. And these people go back and forth on the narratives. And as a matter of fact, they create the narratives. As I said, all the athletes and coaches combined, and then all of the little G leagues and D leagues combined, and then all the people that run the shows and work on the shows and all the podcasts and things like this combined, it's like a couple thousand people. That's it. No one else gives a shit about LeBron James or who's looking good next year. No one gives a fuck. The fans just want to watch competition and people representing their jurisdiction. It's a joke. It's primal. I enjoy it, but, you know, I'm, I'm actually censored and I'm not allowed to monetize my channel, not because I'm wrong all the time, but because I'm always right. Or most of the time, I should say. And so anyways, I I connected myself to Milwaukee this year very early on because of the Trump connection with 47, because of the the V connection with 50. And I always go with the V connection. A lot of my picks, you can can see that, that commonality. And so, you know, they sweep Miami in the beginning. I didn't make any content about basketball. As a matter of fact, I'll just say it right here. Now, I didn't watch a single game. I would like type in NBA playoffs in Google. And I would watch the little ticker. That's it. I didn't watch a single game. So they sweep Miami. They go on to play Brooklyn. Everyone says, this is the finals right here. You know, Brooklyn's loaded. Everyone's saying Brooklyn's going to win. And before we even get to this point, two months before the playoffs even started, I collapsed a giant narrative. I said LeBron James would not repeat. He got bounced in the first round. One giant narrative collapsed. Now, I connected myself to Milwaukee when they were down 0-2 is when I made my first video saying how to beat KD in the Brooklyn Nets. They went on to win in seven and go on to play Atlanta Hawks. The, the big takeaway from that series was that Giannis hyperextended his knee and didn't even play at the end of the series, and they didn't think he was going to come back. And so then it goes to the finals, right? And he, he plays right away, and they lose the first two. So they're down 0-2 in the finals. I mean, the chances of of Milwaukee coming back and winning this thing were were slim to none. Everyone was on the Phoenix narrative. Everyone had jumped on to the fact that Devin Booker was next Kobe Bryant. Everyone jumped on the fact that, oh, I want to see Chris Paul get his. He's He's a good friend of LeBron James. And they kept putting this connection out there. Keep in mind, Chris Paul was one of the only actors left that the NBA had to offer up. And man, they played that that really well, except the only problem was the whole time it looked like Chris Paul didn't know if he was acting or actually playing basketball, didn't it? One game he looked good, or should I say one quarter he looked good, and then he looked bad. It's because he's always looking for the flop. He's always looking for the whistle. He's the head of the Players Association. He knows how to play the game, wink, wink, not basketball so much, but the game of NBA entertainment. But in the playoffs, you don't get that as much. And a concept I put out early on when picking Milwaukee is that the NBA, the league, the sport of basketball in general, 
is trying to re-legitimize itself. And you immediately see all the actors get bounced out of the playoffs, right? And you have a legitimate basketball team in Milwaukee, which is what I saw from the beginning. Big guys, strong defensive team. They play basketball the right way against all these finesse, victim mentality type players like Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. Should I keep going? And the coaches, Doc Rivers. I mean, Steve Kerr, he's not even in there. I mean, he's so fragile. He's out somewhere pulling his spiky hair out. Then you got Steve Nash, a first-year head coach. You trust these people? You trust these narratives? <laughs> so I put the concept out that basketball was re-legitimizing itself. I didn't know how big the prediction was going to be. I didn't realize that connecting myself to Milwaukee was going to actually be picking the finals that was going to dethrone LeBron James and give the crown to Giannis, probably for the foreseeable future. He's 26. He's got another decade of dominating basketball to play. Legitimate basketball. We're talking, you know, real basketball. So all these fake teams are going to have to compete with real basketball. And this, this narrative of the super team has also collapsed with this prediction that has come to fruition. So they're down 0-2 to Phoenix. It's not looking good, man. All the pundits, everybody, all the gematriatics, all the mathematicians were coming out of the woodwork. Oh, I told you. I did the math. It added up this year for Phoenix. The Phoenix is rising. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 no. The buck stops here. <laughs> and it is funny because, uh, you know, speaking of the bucks and collapsing all these narratives as, as the LeBron James acting narrative has collapsed, the super team narrative has collapsed. A new face of the NBA and and re-legitimizing the league. It's 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 a great time, and you can actually see a future in basketball. When you get rid of all the actors and you just put people that want a ball in there, basketball looks like it has a bright future. And so when I said that LeBron James wasn't going to repeat, I also said Tom Brady wasn't going to repeat. And the second that the Bucks won the title, the story was about Tom Brady. How you know, he, he was playing hurt last year. They were planting seeds of doubt, basically, and excuses for why that he's not going to win this year, in my opinion. And, and so, you know, I picked the Bucks in the NBA, and I picked against the Bucks in the NFL. And um, a, a larger concept that goes along with that is that the Bucks win. The Bucks is in, like, the dollar, the, the, the currency, the buck. The Bucks wins with a foreign entity. The Bucks lose with the American entity. So the dollar is collapsing and a new dollar, a new currency is, is rising uh, internationally. You know, it's the reset. It's the end of the economy. Everything's shutting down. The supply lines are shutting down. All the businesses are collapsing. Everybody's incentivized to not work. The government's an utter joke. And it's one of the longest lasting and oldest forms of reality TV that we still have running. And what you're kind of seeing is the end of, of the reality TV. They're not just going to end the show. They're going to unplug the power when they're done. They're not going to let any other shows critique their performance, right? <laughs> and that's what we've been doing this whole time. And so, you know, it's, it became a big prediction. Um, I connected myself to Milwaukee early on. It ended up being a really big deal as far as the NBA is concerned that this team won. Now, all of a sudden, in hindsight, everybody's like, well, he's the Greek freak. He's an amazing player. It's not fair. Where were you a couple weeks ago? I mean, haven't you seen it transpire? You've seen all these people portray this victimhood mentality that are probably going to make up more than $500 million in their career, some of them. Why don't you guys pull some of your money together and fix up I don't know, 15, 20 ghettos across the United States. Uh, what? You still haven't done that? Oh, that's weird. And so, you know, I collapsed several narratives in the NBA this year, and, and we created some new ones as well. We took their shitty picture, and we repainted it a little bit. And we kind of put it on a new path. And I think that that path is, looks good if you like basketball, if you like sports. And the same goes with football. Um... I, I, I've I been trying to not make a lot of content about professionally fake sports. But again, basketball is re-legitimizing their sport. I think that same thing is going to happen in the NFL, in which an aging quarterback isn't realistic anymore. He's not going to repeat. You're going to see the end of that narrative. The Tom Brady narrative will collapse this year as well. 
I know a lot of people have said, oh, Tom Brady's going to fall off a cliff. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. They've been putting that out for, for years, right? Some of these stupid pundits on TV, like, oh, not this year, next year, not this year, next year. I mean, eventually, yeah, you're going to be right, like a fucking broken clock. How many people go out on a limb a year in advance on some of their picks like me? Go ahead. Leaf through my fucking content. So, uh, I just wanted to hit those couple points. The narratives in basketball changing and evolving with the win of a Milwaukee Bucks team is groundbreaking for that league. And it's going to change it for the better indefinitely. And so I'm the guy that picked the Cavs to win in 2016. I picked Cavs over Golden State in seven. That was huge. That one kind of solidified LeBron James as owning the decade, in my opinion. And then this one, picking the Bucks to win. When I did, when they were down 0-2 against the, the Nets, no one else was there. I mean, maybe a couple. Not many can produce the links. So once again, this channel with its thumb directly on the pulse of the NBA, which is just in itself a microcosm of of this country and this reality. I make these ancillary predictions to see if I can still read the room correctly. I like sports. It's not like I I don't care. I I do care, but I don't watch anymore. I don't care to that extent. Um, But I put these things out there because seeing these predictions go from a prediction to fruition helps lend credibility to my larger concepts, such as the lawyer world order, a concept I put out in 2019, which was my concept as to who runs the world. It's an all-encompassing concept that unites every single person on this planet, and it singles out a common denominator underlying enemy for all of us. And it exposes the fact that the pen is mightier than the sword until we can prove that to be false, which we can so easily. And it puts a name to the face of who they are. This all came about in 2019. In 2019, Merriam-Webster's word of the year was they. And people like myself, I'm not taking all the credit, have been warning about this kind of stuff for a long time. I'm just the person that put a name to the face of who they are and put a concept out there, such as the lawyer world order, in which the establishment has been spinning out of control ever since. Was it sliding out of control before then? Sure. 2019, it started to intensify. Absolutely. And you see the lies the system has had to build and then build upon. And you see how shaky this thing was to begin with, a foundation built on sand. And this paper reality they've constructed on these giant lies that we all witnessed in real time. And now we just move on. I don't think they're going to last much longer. I'm being asked right now where I work to put in orders for supplies for two or three months ahead because we're not going to be able to order anything. What do they know? What are they seeing? More lockdowns? Push back to the mass V program? But putting a name to the face of who they are has at least given us an idea of who our enemy is. And then perhaps we can formulate a new concept as to how to beat it. And so I'm trying to get away from from talking sports bullshit. But I had that prediction out there about LeBron James not repeating from almost three months ago. In that same prediction, I also said Tom Brady would not repeat. And the second that my first prediction came true, with LeBron James getting bounced in the first round of the playoffs, I then threw in my NBA pick right on top of that. Milwaukee Bucks won the title against all odds, against all the pundits, and against all the gematriatics and mathemagicians. Once again, this channel was throwing bullseyes from the beginning. And right on cue... I'm seeing all kinds of stories about Tom Brady. I'm seeing Tom Brady giving his jersey to number 46 up on stage, kind of taking shots at him about the election. Very interesting stuff. And so I don't know how the NFL season is going to transpire. I mean, you know, I'm not going to watch a single game, just like the basketball season. But I have one more lingering sports prediction out there, and it's that Tom Brady will not repeat. And that's it for today, Internet. Until next time.